How many have you forgiven today? Chapter 18, Revelation, Part 1 Anon is sitting in his dream world. A lot has happened, and he's just taking a few moments to try and get his mind in the right place. He hates to admit it, but it's extremely exhausting to get up every day and interact with ponies. Being social isn't his thing, and it takes a lot out of him. He's happy that he can dreamwalk with ease now. It gives him a lot of time to be by himself. While he does have fun and enjoys his friend's company, it's still far from what he's used to, and he doesn't know if he'll ever get over his introverted ways. Anon's thoughts are taken from him as he hears someone knock on his door. Well, that can only be one pony. Come in, Luna. The door opens and Luna walks in with a slight pause. Anon instantly notices her hesitance and takes note of it. That's not usually something she does. Not to mention her demeanor is reserved and timid, in a sense. This is enough to put Anon on edge. Something is going on with Luna and she's come to talk to him about it. That much is obvious. Hello, Anon. I hope I wasn't interrupting anything? He shakes his head. Not at all. You know you're always welcome into my dream world. That puts Luna at ease slightly, but she still needs to talk to Anon about what he experienced. Anon, I have something I wish to speak to you about. He knew it. If he had a guess, it's probably about Nightmare Moon. Anon still hasn't forgotten about her, but he is cautious in letting Luna know about his plans with Nightmare. That's something he'll keep to himself for a while, if only to sate his own curiosity. It's about Nightmare Moon, right? Luna freezes in place. Yes, you probably have many questions, and I am here to answer them. It is not something I wish to keep from you, as I feel we are good friends. Anon crosses his arms. Well, it's interesting, and it could give him insight on Nightmare Moon. How long has she been there? Since the elements purified me. Anon doesn't remember equestrian history that well, but he can assume she's been there for more than a few years. Does she have any power over you? Luna shakes her head. She simply inhabits my mind, nothing more. She keeps her silence on my day-to-day -day activities and stays locked within the void that you saw. Hmm. He doesn't want to question Luna too much. He can see that this is a tough subject for her. She's probably worried about everything that happens between him and Nightmare Moon. While it's still fresh in his mind, it doesn't bother him as much as it did in the moment. Well, I'm not mad at you, if you're worried about that. Anon assures her. I was just surprised, is all. Other than that, I'm willing to forget about everything that happened with Nightmare Moon. He can see Luna visibly relax, letting out a large sigh as well. I was worried that you would become afraid of me. Think that Nightmare Moon was still in control of my actions. Anon can see how she came to that conclusion. I assume that I'm the only one that knows about her. She nods her head. Please keep it between us. It goes without saying. Anon looks at his empty dream space. He has no reason to be here anymore. You want to practice dreamwalking some more? That puts a smile on Luna's face. Yes, let's continue your training. Celestia lets out a large yawn as she sits up in bed. She looks over to the empty side of her bed with a large sigh. Her heart is hurting a bit, thinking of Anon's absence. Though the pain doesn't linger, as she's reminded of the party tomorrow. Soon Anon will be given lots of free time to spend with her. There are still many things she wants to show him. Things that she's never shown anyone. Perhaps even take him traveling to other kingdoms. These thoughts are enough to get Celestia's motor running as she hops out of bed filled with vigor. Yes. She must only endure this day, for tomorrow brings forth a new dawn. However, before she can start her day, she must take a quick bath. Though it won't be as fun without Anon, that'll soon change, and that's enough to keep her spirits high. Wakey wakey! Anon opens his eyes to see Lyra as laying on top of him, a large smile on her face. What are you doing in here, Lyra? Anon was positive he locked his door. Breakfast is ready. Give me five minutes, Anon says, covering his face. Alright. 
While Anon can't see her, he can tell that Lyra hasn't gotten off of him to leave. Lyra. Yes? I want five minutes alone. Oh! Anon can feel Lyra scramble off him as she runs to his door. I'll be downstairs. Anon can feel an omen of sorts from how Lyra was acting, yet he's too tired to give it much thought. There's a lot of things he needs to do today. Not to mention the party tonight with Bon Bon and then the party tomorrow. Lots of things in very little time. His hand drops from his face as he lets out a sigh, looking at the ceiling. Well, time to get the day started. Anon is walking around the kitchen, making sure all the chefs are doing their jobs. Not really hovering, but keeping a close eye out for any mistakes. He can see that nearly all of them are doing well. All except one. Anon walks beside Butterhooves as he drips sweat from his head. Keep your head clear while leaning over the pot. I don't want our customers tasting your sweat. Sorry. He quickly wipes his head clean. Anon is looking over his workstation. All things considered, it's well kept and organized. Still, Butterhooves is nervous. Perhaps Anon's intimidating demeanor is putting him on edge. If this keeps up, then it'll end with many problems down the line, and that's not something Anon wants to deal with. You're doing well, Anon says, trying to boost his confidence. Keep up the good work. Butterhoves looks up at Anon, surprised. Uh, thank you, sir. Anon doesn't respond as he walks over to Bon Bon. Last thing he needs is some weird heartfelt exchange with one of his employees. It's already happened one too many times. How do you feel about everything? He asks. I believe in our staff. They're all hardworking ponies that hold up the high standards that we've set. I think we can leave this place to them. Butterhoves. He's holding up as expected. The others are helping him whenever he needs help. I'm not too worried about him. Are you? Anon looks back at Butterhoves. He looks confident when he's at a station, but clumsy whenever he's doing other things. It's an odd thing, but perhaps that's just how ponies are? When they're in their elements, then they're confident in their talents to guide them. But those are questions that matter little to him at this moment. He's doing well. Anon looks down at Bon Bon's paperwork. How are sales? We're still making a profit. I dare say we may even have enough to open another shop soon. Now that's an idea. Anon rubs his chin in thought. Certainly would make an interesting idea. However, I'd like to make sure we've got everything covered before we thought about expanding. I'm sure you and Lyra would like to have someone else work the front and handle the paperwork. Bon Bon rotates her neck some. Yeah, that would be nice. It's just a thought, though. So, with all this money, what do you plan on doing with it? Bon Bon shrugs. I live a simple life, Anon. Just having a roof over my head is enough. There are probably less fortunate ponies that could use some help. A philanthropist? She chuckles. <laughs> I guess. Anon feels good hearing Bon Bon talk so casually. Knowing he's the reason she has no financial troubles makes him feel like he's done his job as a good friend. He doesn't even know what to do with the money she gives him. Bon Bon opened an account for him at some fancy Canterlot bank, and he's just been letting the bits gather. He doesn't have any use for money. Celestial lets him stay at the castle, so that's food and residence taken care of. There's also a massive library where he can freely take books to read. With no technology matching what humans have, there isn't a need to buy games or stuff like that. All the things money could have bought Anon on his world doesn't really give him much in this one. Well, again, that's mostly thanks to Celestia. Though, given how much money the shop makes, he'd be able to pay simple bills like that ten times over. Anon finds his mind returning to what is planned for tonight. So, when is the party tonight? It should be around 8. I'll be ready. Anon decides to check on the fronts. I'll see if Lyra needs some help. Don't get in trouble this time! <laughs> I'll try. Gilda's standing outside of the candy shop in wait. She's been here for a while now, but hasn't moved an inch. She doesn't want to anger that bat pony if she happens to be watching her right now. So, you ready to meet Anon? Gilda snaps to reality as she finds the bat pony in front of her. As ready as I'll ever be. Alright, I just want to remind you that if you make any threatening moves towards Anon, 
I'll break your wings and toss you off the edge of Canterlot to see if you can fly. Gilda shivers some as Blossom looks her dead in the eyes. Yeah, I, I get it. Good. Now stick next to me and keep calm. Blossom takes the lead as she walks through the front door of Anon's shop, Gilda not too far behind. Anon is standing at the front counter with Lyra, the two of them talking about boring business stuff. When the door hits the bell, they both look over. Anon is surprised when he finds Blossom standing at the door to a shop. Blossom? Blossom smiles as she walks up to the front counter with Gilda in tow. Lyra's eyes instantly lock onto Gilda, as she instantly recognizes the griffin that threatened Anon, her fur now standing on end. Blossom takes note of this and assumes that Gilda came here looking for Anon first. Makes sense why they got the report about her. Lyra quickly stands on her hind hooves and pulls Anon down to whisper to him. At first, he looks confused, but then slowly that expression falls to a neutral one as his eyes lock onto the griffin. Blossom almost gets the feeling that the air around Anon is colder. He has his guard up. His eyes then instantly lock onto Blossom, a certain questioning look about them. Once they're close enough, Anon speaks first. Who's your friend? Blossom finds no reason to drag this along. No need to beat around the bush. This is the griffin that threatened you. Don't worry, she knows her place. But there's a reason I brought her here and I'd like to discuss it in private with you. Blossom's eyes drift over to Lyra. And only you. Lyra quickly reaches up and grabs Anon's hand. He can see that she's worried, but Anon trusts that Blossom has everything under control. Otherwise, she wouldn't have brought this griffin here. Not to mention that she's piqued his interest. I've got spare time. Anon rests his other hand on top of Lyra's hoof as he looks at her. Hold down the fort. I'll be right back. I don't trust that griffin. Please don't go. Lyra pleads. I trust Blossom, and that's enough for me. I'll be fine. Lyra lets go of Anon's hand as he walks past her and towards the stairs. My room is plenty private. Please, follow me. Lyra has her eyes locked onto Gilda as the three of them walk up the stairs. She really doesn't want Anon to be alone, but she trusts him enough to stay at the front counter until he returns. We all knew Blossom was going to be there. And it's a guarantee that she's going to mention some innuendo here and there. But anyway, let's get on to our casual donators. Top donators Bobcat GJF, Zar630, Jaten Man, Only One Thing, Suru Orion, and Iron Sky. Darkside, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Har, Pastel Skies, Alton Rollins, Stu Hex, Sword Brother, and Mortar, Amicron, Lyra, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Ride, Soul, Badass Waffle, Shadow Moon, Luigi88, Chancellor Crest, Big Smoke369, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.